My father brought us these apples last night that he picked up at the farm stand. They're delicious and fresh and local, something I look for in an apple, but not real crisp. They're galas. They're a little bit more mealy. They're really more of a baking apple than a crisp apple that's a snack on. So I think the best thing to do with these apples is to make some apple butter. I started looking at apple butter recipes. So we'll make some apple butter that has no added sugar and just uses a little bit of organic apple juice and some cloves and some cinnamon. First step is going to be to peel and core these apples. So let's look at what we can do about that. Don't put a lot of thought into it. Just get the peel off the apple. Of course, peeling all those apples gets a little tiring. So you can go old school on the apples with an apple peeler. You can uh, pick one of these up from the, in the links below if you want to get one of these. This is the way to go if you're doing a lot of apples. Basically the setup is you put the apple in, try to get it straight, engage it with the cutting blade here, and turn. This cores the apple a lot faster and the apple comes out easy, no seeds. Position the apple, engage it with the blade here, turn slowly, and it cores it automatically. I could do this all day. Next step in prepping the apples for our apple butter is to core them. The ones that we peeled, we're going to have to get the core out and this little bit of skin that's left. So you can do it with a knife if you're clever with your thumb and the tip of the blade. Just using your thumb for a depth gauge, you can actually just pivot the skin right off of the apple. Same with the core. And finish the peeling job. Final step in our apple prep is to get the core out and get the rest of the peel off. You might want to use a melon baller, super handy tool to remove the core and the little bit of remaining peel. Another option might be just use a simple teaspoon if you don't have a melon baller. Doesn't really work as well, the edge isn't as sharp. But still gets the job done. For the apples that we cut on the apple peeler, you just take off that part chop and they're ready to go in the crock pot. Once you've got the apples cored, go ahead and just slice the apples up into smaller bits so they can cook a little bit more evenly. And everything goes into the crock pot. Magic to this recipe is we're going to make it in the crock pot. Beauty of the crock pot is you don't have to worry about getting up every three hours and stirring it, checking it on the stove. You can literally just put it in there, maybe give it a stir every couple of hours if you want to have a look at it, but you don't have to worry about it cooking all night and waking up to a burnt, sticky mess. Once you've got your apples all cleaned up and your crock pot filled up, Add an inch or two of apple juice just to cover the bottom here. I've got an inch in there. Um, obviously, you're gonna. Have, this is all gonna boil away, but we want something to protect the bottom of the crock pot so the apples don't burn. The apples, as they cook, will release juice and replace that liquid and, and eventually cook off and give you a nice, fine consistency. But just to get started, we want to make sure we've got some juice in the bottom of the of the crock pot to protect it. Next, we want a little bit of flavor. You can use ground cinnamon. Ground cinnamon in the crock pot cooked for a long time is going to get bitter. Not really what we're looking for. 
I'd recommend a couple of cinnamon sticks. These are big giant ones. You can find smaller ones in the supermarket. Stick them down in there. Some of the other spices I want to use are nutmeg and cloves. For the cloves, I don't want to find a clove in my apple butter some morning when I'm enjoying my breakfast. So I'm just going to tie them up in this cloth that I found. This is just a little piece of cheesecloth. I don't want to tie it too tight, but just enough so the the cloves are all in one place. For the nutmeg, I'm going to hit the cheese grater. That side of the cheese grater that you never use, the, somebody hit it with a nail a thousand times, just run the nutmeg across that. Probably, I don't know, half a nut's worth. Lid this up, plug it in, we'll give it a stir in about six hours. Let's see how our apple butter's doing. Looks like it's cooked down nicely. This is about as far as we're going to be able to take it in the crock pot. Crock pot doesn't really get a hot enough to boil it off. So let's evacuate this to a saucepan on the stove and we can thicken it up a little bit. Be careful when you're handling your crock pot. Remember, this thing is very hot. Here's our spices. We're done with those. Our cloves are all in one place. That was easy. Let's just put this on a nice low heat and let it boil off. You can still see all this juice in here has lots of flavor. That's going to be delish but I don't want to pour it off or strain it off because there's a lot of flavor in that liquid. So we'll just boil it down. It'll go out as water vapor and leave all the flavor behind in our apple butter. This has been cooking for about half an hour now and the big puddles of juice are gone. You can see there's just a couple little areas where steam's coming out. I don't want to dry this out completely. Apples have a lot of pectin, which is a protein that will cause the apple butter to gel a little bit as it cools off. So I'm going to call this done. Let's cut the heat and we'll get this into a jar that we can get into the fridge. Once you've got your apple butter cooked down, it's delicious on toast. And there you have it, apple butter. It's the easiest thing to make. It looked like a lot of work. I granted, you know, to peel all the apples and, but you really, it, it doesn't take, a, it's not hard to do. Peel the apples, throw them in the crock pot, throw in some spices. This recipe I made didn't use any sugar. Throw in a cup of sugar if you want a more traditional apple butter recipe. Make the recipe the same way or make it the way I like it with no sugar added. It's up to you. Either way, it's delicious. Mmm. This is going to be good all winter. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like.